Hello. Over the next five weeks, we're going to unlock the treasure of nature's little secrets, also known as the British Virgin Islands. In this episode, we're going to show you a good itinerary to follow so that you can get a flavor for the world's favorite sailing ground. Then, over the following four weeks, we're going to give you a little bit more information about each of the locations we're showing you in this itinerary video. At Proteus, we want to help you get the most out of your sailing holiday. So, let's break it down. Welcome back. In each of the locations, we're going to tell you about the facilities and amenities for the anchorage. But first, a few basic bits of information. Anchoring and mooring balls are the order of the day in the British Virgin Islands. There are a few marinas available, but unless you have air conditioning aboard, the best way to be cool at night when you're asleep is to either swing at anchor or on a mooring ball so that the air can flow through the boat. There are a couple of different types of moorings available to you. There are pay moorings, which is the majority of the moorings, and they will be clearly marked with the name of the restaurant, bar, or hotel you must pay for the mooring at. Or in some cases, the mooring field is patrolled by a dinghy and they will collect the fee from you. In almost all cases, this is a cash transaction, but be sure to get a receipt. Take care not to use the local businesses or private citizens mooring. The balls will be clearly marked if they're public. These moorings are professionally maintained and provide you, provided you set up your bridle properly, you'll have a peaceful night with no drama. The second type of mooring available to you are the National Parks Trust moorings. These are daytime only, never overnight, and only available if you've purchased your parks permit. Please keep the permit aboard as you may be asked to provide it by a ranger. Uh, the charter company will supply you with a permit, so don't stress about it. The balls within the park are color-coded so that you'll know which ones are for which use. Yellow balls are for commercial diving companies use only. The red balls are for day use only, but you're not allowed to dive from them. And the white balls are for a 90-minute stop only. The National Parks Trust is an incredible resource, allowing snorkeling and diving in the most beautiful areas of the BVI. Please remember to touch nothing, take nothing except pictures, and leave only bubbles. Our impacts on the reef can be minimized without the need to restrict access if we follow those simple rules. The weather in the BVI is incredibly consistent and the forecast may get a little bit boring. I mean, how can you possibly stand 84 degrees every day, moderate humidity and winds from the east at 16 knots? It's tough. The best place to get your weather forecast from is at the AM radio from ZBVI 780 AM at 8.05 in the morning. And then they'll do updates on the half hour hourly. You can also get the weather from VHF on WX3 or 6, depending on where you are in the BVI. For those of you from more northern climes, who are used to huge tidal ranges and ripping currents, the BVI will be a welcome respite. The tidal range can get to about a foot, depending on the phase of the moon and the time of the year. There's also very, very little current to worry about. We'll cover where you can get groceries and all that you need to make your BVI sailing vacation the best one ever in the four videos that will follow this one. Although we'll, we will give you a basic overview of where the amenities are in this video. So let's assume you're on board, provisioned, have had breakfast and you've had your technical and chart briefings. It's time to cast off. This is the most stressful part of your entire vacation. It's been a few months since you have sailed last. You've not ever sailed this boat and the crew has not really ever worked together. We recommend you have a little chat with the team and assign the jobs with clarity and clearly defined responsibilities to get you off the dock. Oh, and remember to unplug the shore power cord. The only fireworks show you want to see are the ones on New Year's Eve. All charter bases are along the southern side of Tortola, so no matter which one you start from, this itinerary will suit you. So the video you're about to watch is going to be quite long. Uh, the charts that we're using are going to be digitally downloaded from NV Charts so that I can show you in quite good detail the anchorages and locations. We will also be using Nancy and Simon Scott's cruising guide and also Virgin Anchorages. So without further ado, let's begin. Here we are with the overview of the BVI. This is the entire BVI and I've got the route planned on where I'm going to show you for the overview. We're going to uh, zoom in in a few moments and look for our first few legs. We'll break it down and we'll have inserts of the anchorages and what to know and what to see and what to do. So we're going to zoom in straight away and we're going to imagine for this chart briefing that uh, we're going to start from Roadtown. All of the charter bases are based along the south side of the island, whether it be up here in Fat Hogs Bay, Roadtown, Sea Cows Bay, Nanny Key or Soper's Hole. 
For the purposes of this chart briefing, it doesn't matter where you start. This is pretty much always going to be the order in which we do stuff. And we always recommend a trip to the Indians and then Norman Island, which is right here. So I'm just going to zoom into that. Uh, the, the Indians and Pelican Island, so here are the Indians and here's Pelican Island, are uh, National Parks Trust area and as such are only a day, at, day stop. There's no overnighting here. The Indians are very close to Norman Island, which is this island down here, and offer great snorkeling and diving opportunities. We always recommend that you approach them from the north, so coming in this general direction. Um, and that will uh, solve the embarrassment of going between the Indians and Pelican Island. So we don't want you to do that. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, once you come in from the north, there are 10 National Parks Trust buoys here. There is no anchoring at the Indians. The water is quite deep. Um, don't attempt to sail between the Indians and Pelican Island. It would be a bit embarrassing. Um, however, there's always excellent snorkeling on the, uh, the reef between the islands and Pelican Island. So we suggest you just dinghy over there. Um, and you know you can dig into the lee of the island. It's deep enough area for excellent scuba diving too in and around here. Um, you may not anchor in the national parks. Uh, if there's not a ball at which to moor, either circle or go down to Norman Island and dinghy back out. It's a little over a half a mile <clears throat> and there are dinghy moorings on the south side of Pelican Island strategically placed. After a great snorkel or dive at the Indians, motor over to Norman Island. There in the bite here, you'll be greeted by the William Thornton, the Willie T as it's affectionately known. Um, the William Thornton is uh, named after the architect of the Capitol building in Washington DC, you know, that, the one with the big dome on it that you see. And in there you'll find a floating pirate ship in the bite. And the restaurant and the bar on shore here is called Pirates. And there's a little dinghy dock that you can go into. Um, we strongly recommend you pick up an, a pay mooring ball in the anchorage rather than anchor. As you can see, it's quite deep in here. This is not feet, this is meters. Um, so uh, if you are going to anchor, you need to anchor in close to the shore, but you must be careful because you, there is a tendency to backwind here. So your swing will be very, very important. But you've got the Willy T where all sorts of nefarious stuff happens and you've got the dinghy dock to the pirates over here, which is also a great little restaurant on shore. There are no other services in the bite. Another great attraction is to take your dinghy around Treasure Point and pick up a dinghy mooring ball on the, uh, on the west side of the island. This too is a national park and is far easier to access by your dinghy than by the main yacht. So just don't move your boat, just dinghy around. Uh, a word of caution here, take great care to watch for swimmers here as you motor in with your dinghy and never use the outboard between the dinghy parking area, which is a sort of a, a line of white buoys uh, strung on, on a blue plastic polypropylene line. Uh, we also recommend that you bring with you a flashlight along with your snorkel gear for the cave exploration. Uh, be prepared to see a lot of small and highly active fish in the area. It's, it is a must for younger kids. In fact, just a little anecdote, when my kids used to, when we used to live there, my kids used to uh, snorkel in there and I'd always take little gold coins and, and scatter them around for them to find and snorkeling. And it was, uh, always a sort of something they would show off when we go and have lunch at the Pirates or at, uh, on the Willy T. So this is a great place to stop for the evening and we are going to uh, now think about what we're going to do the next day. All right, it's now your next morning and you're waking up and you're feeling a little bit thick and foggy because you spent the evening discussing rum beverages at the Willy T. We recommend you head out and head over to uh, Peter Island. Peter Island is half owned by the Crown, as in the Queen, and half privately owned, very, very high-end resort. You'll find a marina, actually, in here, in Sprat Bay, which we'll talk about. And uh, we're just going to zoom in a little bit here. So in here is, the, is Sprat Bay, where the marina is, okay? Please note that you know, when you go into Sprat Bay, that there'll be a marina with fuel, ice and water for available for purchase. The prices can be very, very expensive here. Uh, expect to pay a dollar for a gallon of water and that's to just go into your tanks. However, there are a good couple of, uh, a couple of great anchorages here, both to the north and south sides of the island. We're, we're going to focus on just Great Harbour. So we'll come back and do the other, the other anchorages when we do our sections. Great Harbour is a, is a good anchorage, but you've got to come all the way in. You can't go too far in here because there's fishermen in here. It's quite deep water, and if you tuck up in the eastern portion where I've been showing you here, of the anchorage, you'll be well protected. However, the bottom is challenging to anchor in, so take your time if this is where you're going to anchor. There are mooring balls towards the western side of the bay over here, 
and outside of it's a restaurant there called Ocean Seven. It's quite a good restaurant. They do expect reservations, and there is a dress code there. So if you've got a jacket, that would be great. Uh, they don't have garbage available there, so they don't they won't accept your garbage. Uh, we recommend that you tuck up in the eastern end, as I said, and suggest you're aware of the fact that there is a place in the eastern end where the fishermen run their nets. So we we say you should look around about the twenty foot depth marker area uh, towards the northwest end of the headland. So if you come up sort of this sort of area here, you should be good to go. Uh, the holding's a bit tricky, so make sure and prove that the anchor is properly set. And you'll have a really peaceful anchorage uh, here. It'll be nice and fairly quiet. Uh, it shouldn't be too rowdy at all. Uh, as we said, there is fuel and water and garbage facilities available in Sprat Bay, but you'll have to mortgage your house for it. As this video chart briefing of the BVI is a bit longer than we anticipated, we're going to have to break it down into three parts. In this episode, we've gone from the Charter Base to Norman and Peter Islands, and next week we'll pick up starting our third day at Salt Island, and we'll end up at Anagada. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you like it, please give us a thumbs up. Leave any comments you have below, and please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. We'll see you next Thursday when we go from Salt Island to the North Sound and on to Anagada.